Hello, my name is Edmund Russell. I'm a historian at Carnegie Mellon University. I've spent the last six years studying the history of telegraphs in the United States. The telegraph system was large and complex and took decades to build. I knew if I wanted to understand how that system developed and spread across the continent, I would need some good maps. And in particular, I wanted to be able to show change over time. So I decided to work with a digital cartographer named Lauren Winkler to build the first digital map of a telegraph system anywhere in the world. Today, what I want to do is show you some key features of that map and then convince you to go online and try the map out for yourself. It's free and available to all. When you first land on the map, you'll find a welcoming screen. You can close that. Now you see a story panel on the left and a map representing the telegraph lines on the right. As you scroll through the panel on the left, you'll learn about the various phases of the development of the telegraph system in the United States. Automatically, the map will change to illustrate each of those phases. The first phase was the construction of an experimental line between Washington and Baltimore to show whether telegraphs would work or not. The second phase was to connect major northeastern cities. The third phase was to connect the rest of the uh, eastern United States. The fourth phase was to build a system in California. The fifth phase was to connect those two regional systems, the eastern system and the California system, with a, a transcontinental telegraph line that completed a transcontinental telegraph system for the first time. One of my favorite features of the map is the time slider because it enables us to see how change happened over time. I'll move the slider all the way to the left to 1844 when telegraph construction first began. And as I move the slider to the right, you'll see the system develop. One of the things you'll notice is that lines have various colors. Each color represents a different telegraph company. And if you click on any given line, it will tell you the name of that company and when its line first opened. Another feature that you might want to use is to explore the history of where you live. I happen to live in Pittsburgh in southwest Pennsylvania. Let's look at that as an example. As I move the time slider, I can see the telegraph first reaching Pittsburgh. It reached there in 1846. And one interesting feature of this is that it is part of one of the first two east-west lines extending from the Atlantic toward the Pacific. If I zoom in, and change the background to what's called the current grayscale, I can see a map of today's streets and the location of the first telegraph office in Pittsburgh. If I click on that circle representing the office, I get an information panel on the left that tells you when it opened and the street address of that office. It also shows a picture of the first telegraph office in Pittsburgh. As I move the slider to the right, you'll see that the number, there, there's a number in that circle representing the office and it's growing up to five. That number represents the number of telegraph companies with offices in Pittsburgh. If I click on that, it expands, the circle expands into five smaller circles, each representing a different company and if you hover over that circle, it'll tell you the date that the office opened and the name of that company. One aspect of telegraph history that I wanted to understand is the relationship between telegraphs and native peoples. The map has a layer 
here called Native American Sessions and Reservations that shows the status of native land ownership at any given time. The darker areas in the map represent lands still owned by natives. You can see that when the Eastern Telegraph System was built, natives still owned almost all of the western half of the United States. As the system expanded, in California, you can see that by the time the line was built, natives had lost ownership of that land. So at this point, which is 1854, all the telegraphs are on lands already ceded by natives. But as we move forward to the construction of the transcontinental line in 1861, you can see that the line goes through lands still owned by natives. The telegraph companies unfortunately built their lines without permission, and this became a source of great conflict between the federal government and native peoples in the West. Those are some aspects of telegraph history that I find most interesting. The map has other features and options available too. I hope that you'll go online, try the map out for yourself, experiment with other options, and in the end, develop your own stories about the history of telegraphs in the United States. Thank you for watching.